From the Civic Center in downtown Peoria, we've got exciting Saluki basketball action for you today in this Missouri Valley Conference game. Hello, everyone. I'm Mike Trude. Brandon Thompson is alongside. Brandon Moore, we'll hear from him in just a little bit. But this afternoon, the Salukis have a very important road game again against the Bradley Braves, a team that over the years has given them all kinds of fits. They brought in a lot of good teams to this Civic Center, Brandon, and gone home with a loss. Absolutely. The dogs have struggled mightily here, lost four out of the last five here. And when you look at how successful the dogs have been over the past couple of years. That's amazing. Um, this team is going to shoot the three ball. They're going to try to spread that man to man D that SIU poses. And um, we'll see Gillingham shoot the three ball quite a lot. Marcella Robinson also off the bench, heaving up threes all night. Bradley comes in a little bit injured as Philip Gilbert, their all conference players, out for the game, probably out for three or four more. Gillingham injured his back, did not play last Wednesday, but practiced yesterday, looked pretty good in warm-ups today. Absolutely, and he looked well earlier in the week, scored 31 this week. Uh, he's an offensive threat, and with Gilbert out, he's going to be the guy that's going to take a lot of the load along with Marcus uh, Somerville. Uh, he'll take a lot of the load for Bradley, take a lot of the shots, and he could put up 20, 25 points very easily tonight, very on, easily. Tonight. On the other hand, the Salukis are alone in first place. They're 5-0, and riding a high, playing good defense, rebounding, doing all the little things it takes to win games. Absolutely, you can't say enough about the way the dogs have played and those two losses aside this team has looked as well as a sweet 16 team did two years ago um, Jamal Tatum stepped right in provided valuable minutes at the point guard position and I think very impressive the play of Lamar Owen the transfer from Southeastern um, on the defensive end especially guarding fours guarding threes in addition to the team that they really needed it's the Salukis and Braves from Peoria we hope you enjoy the telecast when we come back we'll have the starting lineups support for this program Illinois. Support. Okay. No problem. It's Sylvester Willis down low. Nice spin move. Can't get it to fall, and Jason Faulkner gets the board. And you see Sly trying to put on some of the offensive showing uh, that he showed us against Evansville here early in the game. This is Chris Mraz. He's a walk on who's getting going to get pressured like he's never been pressured before this afternoon. Another freshman, J.J. Twy, misses the layup, fouled from behind. Looks like Faulkner's going to get hit with that one. Yeah, and you, you know, the difference between this the difference between this Bradley club with, you know, so many newcomers and, like you said, a walk-on running the show at freshman as opposed to the dogs team, you know, with so much experience, the, the NCAA tourney wins. We'll see exactly how this shapes up. Saluki is battling the pressure there. They got through it easily. Brian Turner. Braves in a matchup zone, now 2-3. Southern worked on the zone a lot in their practice last night at the old Robertson Fieldhouse. To the corner, DB. Six on the clock. Darren Brooks hits the first one. The mid-range shot of trademark of Darren's in his years here at SIU. For Bradley to be successful, the offense has to go through Marcelo Somerville. He's a very talented sophomore, played at Iowa, and has the body of a Big Ten player playing in the Missouri Valley Conference. To the corner in Gillingham. Blocked by Brooks, knocked out by Gillingham. Oh, and that's a horrible call by the official. Bad, bad call, and he was right there. You would think with such a close perspective on the play, he would have got that one right, but uh, dropped the ball. It's literally on that one. Saluki's lead it two to nothing on the two by Darren Brooks. Gillingham gets to the free throw line. A lot has a shot block again. Jump ball, Bradley will keep it with five seconds on the shot clock. Darren Brooks already with two blocks against Gillingham, and he had back spasms the other night, did not play in their ball game the other night against Wichita, and uh, who knows where he's at physically. Yeah, it's hard to gauge that exactly. He did play against Wichita, and such a big time scorer, a guy that can slash, a guy that can also put the three ball right in your face. Gillingham for three, no. Rebound by Twy, they got the easy offensive board. Gillingham had to force it because the shot clock was running out. Hairston goes right through the middle and is fouled by Mraz. We talked to SIU during the week, and you know, uh, Stetson Harrison especially, he said our, our defense creates our offense, as is, you know, a, a cliche phrase, I guess, among most sports clubs, but it really is the truth here with SIU. 
Harrison on the wing, guarded by Twy. To Korn, wide open three. In and out, rebound to Willis. Fouled from behind by Gillingham. And quickly, the Braves have three fouls against them. Something that you don't want to do if you're Bradley is get in foul trouble with the injury problems that they've had with the, you know, the, the depth issues, just not a place that Jim Les Clubs need to be. Especially if it's Gillingham getting in foul trouble because obviously Robinson not going to play and Gilbert out already. They have other guards, but they're young. They're freshmen. Brooks working on Gillingham. Nice move by Brad Korn. Nails the jumper. Such a pretty shot and just a pleasure to watch uh, to any basketball pundit. You know, that's the perfect release rotation splash there by Brad Korn. Gillingham top of the key. Southern in there man to man. That's all they play. There's Somerville. And that's what he does well. And it's going to be tough tonight to stop uh, Marcellus Somersville. Just, you know, an inside threat. But, you know, he can also shoot that mid-range jumper, and that's something that the dogs are going to have to deal with. You know, and, and the zone could help that. Bradley using the zone pressure, trying to speed the game up a little bit, but Southern experience knows that you don't want to get up and down with the Braves, because if you get behind, the crowd gets into it, and then it gets really nasty. Brooks for three, off. Long rebound controlled by Brian Turner. Stetson Harrison wide open, look for three, no. Faulkner gets the board. Here come the Braves. Knocked away, and that's where Chris Mraz his lack of to Sly for a dunk. Big time dunk by Sly Willis and steal by Turner. Corn for three. Nope. Here comes Gillingham to Mraz. JJ Twy. Short, locked, and controlled by the Dogs. That's three or four blocks already by Southern. Yeah, these young guards are struggling thus far for Bradley. Oh, Turner wanted to pop the three, but didn't. Slukies need to get it inside. There's Brooks to the hole. They're going to call a charge. Fifteen forty-five left to go in the first half. The Dogs lead the Bradley Braves by a score of six to four. Support for Saluki basketball is brought to you in part by First Cellular, a Southern Illinois company specializing in wireless data communication services throughout the communities of Southern Illinois. First Cellular is proud to be a continued supporter of SIU Saluki athletics. Back in action, wholesale changes for the Salukis. They bring in four new players: Tatum, Owen. Tony Young and Josh Warren. Bradley gets a long three from Somerville. It doesn't go. Rebound controlled by Jamal Tatum. Here come the dogs on the run. Marcello Robinson also into the game now for Bradley. Traveling by Stetson Hairston. Robinson doesn't, won't get a lot of minutes, but he'll give him what he can. Absolutely. A good role player at the point guard position, a heady guy, a guy who's been here, been here four years and, and played all four years uh, as a senior. And, Marcello from Kankakee, Illinois. He's battling some knee injuries and some foot injuries. He does not practice during the week. Wears a, a little bit of a, puts his foot in a brace and is only a gamer. No practice during the week. Gillingham to the wing and Robinson wide open. Faulkner scores. <laughs> Really, we knew that would be the Achilles heel of this SIU team this year is that interior defense. Um, you know, Josh just not able yet to match up with the big bodies in the MVC at this point. We're tied at six, just underway here at the uh, Civic Center in Peoria. Dogs 11 and two, Bradley eight and eight. It's now a 2-1-2 two -two matchup zone. Stetson for three, no. Dogs are not getting inside. Twy, nice bounce pass. And you know that that's somewhat that's what you lose sometimes when you bring Josh Warren into a ball game is in transition on the defensive end. You know he's not going to be as quick as say a Sly would be back down. Lamar Owen answers back for the Dogs, tie it back up at eight. Faulkner already has four points. He only averages 3.8. There's always been a guy on Bradley that scores that shouldn't. Nobody checked out J.J. Twy on the offensive boards. Cello working on Jamal Tatum. 
Nice pass. Going to be a foul on Stetson. And Faulkner keeps getting inside on the dogs. And it's tough, you know, when you got Josh Warren, who's a big body, but, you know, defensively in the post, his skills not quite developed as, as, as some of the bigger guys here in the NBC. Uh, you know, you bring Sly in and get that back. Stetson sets down, as does Josh Warren, Sly Willis, and Lamar Owen back for the Salukis. And there's the bump there by Stetson. Good and a foul. Wow. <laughs> you know, the dog's just getting out muscled and outplayed down low at this point, and something's got to change. Something must change here early on, or else Bradley's going to run away with this thing by just banging it down low. Somerville, very strong. 6'7 sophomore. He's from Peoria. Faulkner out. Michael Suggs in. Suggs has burned the Salukis for over 40 points and 25 rebounds the last two games. Huge numbers. Somerville, free throw line. Shot is good. Braves lead it by three. It's 11-8. Darren Brooks is back into the game. Look, Lamar, when bringing the ball up, I think that's something that you just don't find in the NBC every day as a guy who can play you know, all four positions and play them quite well. To the corner, Brian Turner for three, no. Foul by Jamal Tatum. And when shots don't fall, Southern doesn't look too good on offense. And that's the case for everybody. Joey Paul comes in for J.J. Twy. Joey Paul, 6'3", sophomore out of Highland Park, Illinois. You know, their motto is the, the defense kind of gets the offense, but, you know, when you're getting hurt down low defensively, it kind of, you know, uh, hurts morale coming back down because you look what you're doing on the offensive end or on the defensive end. Sucks, top of the key. They're just going to try to get it inside. Paul for three. Bradley by six, 14 to eight. Dogs get it in across the timeline. Now Jamal Tatum wrapped up. They call the jump ball. And he saw Jamal trying to do something, trying then at the end to signal for a timeout and just did not get it. So look, he's worked on the pressure last night, but having a little difficulty attacking the pressure. They get it back on the alternate possession. There's Brooks with it. DB inside to Lamar for two. Nice feed. Here come the Braves. They're trying to push it. It sucks. Somerville, 15 footer. He's got seven. Tatum. To Brooks. Lamar Owen. Bradley now in the man defense. Brooks knocks it off of Suggs, and Southern keeps it. 18 seconds on the shot clock. Bradley leads at 16-10. Right now, offensively for the dogs, I think, you know, the important thing is just to, to relax and, you know, work on that shot selection. That's been something that's been, you know, a, a point of SIU, and they just have not executed here. There's the bounce yeah, just off the of Suggs. Kicked right on out of bounds. Danny Adams has come into the lineup for Bradley. He replaced Gillingham. Braves sit in that zone. Brooks from the corner, short. Braves get the rebound. Yeah, and that's what his own defense is going to make you do is, you know, take those shots and because you can't get Somerville. it to the bigs. Sly. No, it won't go, but he draws the foul. Sly absolutely got clobbered down with about three guys in hands everywhere. Fouls on Robinson. To the free throw line will be Sylvester Willis. Sly on the season is a 67% free throw shooter. And he miss. Corn and Hairston back into the game, replacing Tatum and Lamar Owen. 
Jamal Tatum, the freshman phenom, goes to the bench. And Sly gets a chance for another free throw. Got it. We've come to our second media timeout, 11.29 left to go in the first half. It's Bradley 16, the Salukis 11. We'll be back. And back in Peoria, the Braves lead the Salukis by a score of 16 to 11. Support for this program comes from the SIU Alumni Association. Benefits to association members include discounts at hotels, restaurants, and car rentals, along with the Southern Alumni Magazine, Saluki Pride Newsletter, and invitations to alumni appreciation events. SIUalumni.com for more information. And WSIU is your home for Saluki basketball. Show your support by calling now with a pledge. That number, 1-800-745-9748. Saluki's so trailing at early 16 to 11. It's been Bradley's good defense with their with their zone that has uh, forced the Saluki's unable to get things done inside, and they're not getting much done outside. Here you see the Braves coming down on offense. They're attacking on transition. A nice pass to Faulkner. Yeah, and then you just see the the finish, and not a big time finish, just an easy lay in, but a bucket is a bucket nonetheless. The dogs just getting abused down low thus far. Um, the interior defense absolutely soft for SIU here in the early going. Saluki's only shooting 38%, Bradley at 46, and the dogs are getting out rebounded early on 10 to six. It's Joey Paul. To the top, Danny Adams for three. No, too hard. Long rebound controlled by Brian Turner. Man-to-man -man defense now by the Braves. Brooks on the wing. Down to Sly, back to Stetz, to the corner, and Corn. yes. Brad Corn for two, the dogs cut the deficit to four, to three rather, 16-13. Brad, that, that's a safe shot for Brad Corn. a nice 15-footer, uh, that is a, a, a nine times out of 10 safe bet. They double team Somerville when he gets the ball on the low post. This is where he's effective though, he's working on Corn. There's Suggs, shot clock at 12. Steal by Stetson, if he can control it, he can't though. Good effort by Stetson Harrison anticipating that pass. Stetson, one of the best defensive players on this Saluki squad, um, you know, uh, uh, in there in the top 10 on the SIU all-time steals list and will likely rise into the top two by the time all is said and done here with his uh, Saluki career. They're, they, the shot clock is at 35 and it should not be at 35, it ought to be around 10 or 11. See what they do. I would say 10 seconds. Well, we'll come and talk and sing a nod and... 10. Indeed, 10 seconds. Here come the Braves. They got to get a shot off pretty quickly. Robinson working on Turner. Oh. Jump ball and Bradley will get it with three on the shot clock. And more importantly, they have to take it out high towards center court. So they have to get a shot off very, very quickly. Absolutely, just time for kind of a, a heave in and, 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 and heave in. <laughs> Watch the give right back to Somerville. Oh, a long three from Robinson. Oh, yeah! Drains it. <laughs> wow. That reminds you of Darren Brooks against Charlotte a little while ago on a Friday night in December. Absolutely. Or January, rather. When Darren Brooks hit a three, just about like that, although Darren's was a lot more high arcing attempt. Stetson with it on the wing. Braves back up by six. Nice pass into Brad Korn. Turnaround shot, no, rebound. To who? To Bradley, went off a slide. Good shot by Brad, it just didn't go down and Jim Les likes what's happening early for his Braves. As he should, the Braves have looked pretty good playing that zone D and then the offensive end, they've been able to pound it in, uh, attack the dogs' obvious glaring weakness on the defensive end and hasn't been all Bradley thus far, but. Here's Mraz again, let's see what Turner can do with him. Somerville. The thing that's so impressed about Somerville is he can knock down a three and he can take you to the hoop with the best of them. Joey Paul up top, now it's Mraz again. Bradley has trouble making a pass from the wing with Mraz at the point. Now Gillingham will try to take Darren Brooks. He did, 
and the shot is off, rebound by Setson Harrison. That's the defense Southern wants. Absolutely, and that's not a wise decision to make is trying to take Darren Brooks one-on-one. -on -one. He'll lock you down. 19-13, under nine minutes to go in the half. Knocked away by Somerville, and he's all over the court. I mean, you talked about Somerville earlier. I mean, just not something that you see on the mid-major level a whole lot as a guy. 6'7", you know, 6'6", six, six, that can play inside as a, as a power forward and also can handle the ball as a two-guard. Corn has Somerville up top. Pass down to Darren Brooks. Nice under for DB. Nice move. Darren's got four. 19-15. Mraz, ooh, almost stolen by Brian Turner. Blocked by Turner. Pass out to Stetson. For the oh. jam, and he's fouled hard oh. by Somerville. And that would have been absolutely huge for morale had that dunk gone down. It would have been gigantic. First foul on Somerville. Here's the outlet by Sly. Again, Sly coming down the court. It's looking good, looking good, looking not so good. Uh, he got hacked, though, so I guess that's a that's a safe excuse. Stetson, 78% free throw shooter. Too strong. Robinson back in for Mraz. He can't handle the pressure. So they go back to Marcello Robinson, who has the experience and can run the show. Yeah, Mraz, like you said, a, a walk-on, um, you know, a guy that's, you know, gonna struggle with nerves, no doubt. Stetson makes one of two. His first point, dogs back within three. Now Jamal Tatum gets to work on Marcello Robinson. I like this matchup for the dogs. Out to Joey Paul and Stetson's gonna hound him. Gillingham. 12 on the shot clock. To the wing and Joey Paul. Suggs with it out the top of the key. Looking for Somerville. Robinson, a long three, no. Long rebound to Somerville, though. Wow. That was an acrobatic move wow. by Marcello. Wow, he channeled some uh, Allen Iverson with that move. Absolutely incredible move for Marcello. Brooks inside, blocked, rebound. Owen oh, blocked by oh. Gillingham. Two big blocks by the Braves, and we've come to another media timeout. 7.22 left to go in the first half. Bradley 21, the Saluki 16. Back with more after this. Bradley 21, Southern Illinois 16. Support for Saluki basketball is brought to you in part by Vogler Motor Company. Mark Williams, Outdoor Equipment. Banterra Bank. Benagoning, Harrell Distributing, LLC. Golden Eagle Distributing, and B&G Benagoning Distributing. 710 Bookstore and the Sluki Connection. SI Family Dentistry, Gentry Couch Incorporated. Bryant Heating and Air Conditioning, Daniel and Son Mechanical Contractors, and Garavaglia Heating and Cooling, and by the Southern and Central Illinois Laborers District Council. We thank all the sponsors for making our telecast possible. 21-16 the score, and Bradley has done exceptionally well on the defensive end again, and making things happen on offense by keeping the ball alive on, on, yeah. uh, on blocks. Absolutely, and you see right before we went to break there, Marcello Robinson just an amazing move inside. He's played well. Uh, he'll get limited minutes tonight, but he's played well. Four points so far for uh, Marcello. Southern to inbound it. It's Stetson. Goes out high to, to Darren Brooks, and Southern starts the offense. Sluki's improving a little bit on the shooting end at 39%, but Bradley's at 43 now. Lamar Owen from the corner. Lamar hits his shot. And he is having another good game. He's got six points. Lamar has looked great this season. And I, I would say as the season has progressed, he's looked better and better as he's gotten more comfortable Faulkner in his role with SIU. For three, no. Rebound to Brooks. 
That was the shot that Faulkner hit every time a year ago against Southern. Slukies can get within one or tie it with a three. Tatum, yes. He got a two, and Southern's back within one. Long two. Robinson wow. all the way to the hoop. Wow, and Marcello Robinson absolutely looking unstoppable thus far in the early going. Back to a three-point game, 23-20. Harrison on the baseline. To Stetson. Travel with the basketball. Picked up his uh, back foot. You cannot do that in the game of basketball. J.J. Twy back in. Sylvester Willis back in. You get the feeling, even though there's still plenty of time left in the first half, uh, it's going to be a game that's going to go down to the wire. There's not going to be a whole lot of inside movement for the dogs on the offensive end, or at least it doesn't appear that that's going to be the fact here early. Tony Young guarding J.J. Twy. To Gillingham, who's not been a factor such thus far. They give it to Bradley. That's a good call. Sly ripped it away and took it away from him. 23 on the shot clock. Braves lead it by three, 23-20. Just under six minutes to go in the half. Twy will trigger. Looking for Robinson. Suggs blocked. Nice block by Southern. Slukies can tie it with a three. And as well as Bradley's played, which is about as well as Bradley can play, Slukies are within three. Sylvester gets stripped by uh, Twy, but he steps on the baseline, and Southern will keep it. Bradley has looked very good, and, and this is a good ball club. I mean, picked to finish, uh, what, third in the MVC preseason uh, without their leading scorer, and still looking like a very, very formidable foe here early. There's the uh, Joey Twy had not gotten himself back in bounds in order to make that, uh, to, in order to touch the ball. Tony Young, down to Sly. Jump hook, yes. Sly with a jump hook, and Southern's back within one. Another move from his self-proclaimed vast repertoire there for uh, Sly Willis. Robinson is so quick at the point. A hook, Lamar hooked Somerville. Good call, good play, stopped, a, stopped an easy layup. Lamar's first foul, and that is also a good sign because he doesn't have two or three fouls already. Yeah, playing very calm, very uh, within the game early on. Nice pass, nice bounce to Faulkner. No, he didn't go, but another foul on Lamar. And Southern didn't rotate that time, and now Lamar's gonna have to come out with two fouls, and Brad Corn's gonna come in. And, you know, Lamar being such a high-energy player, that's something that you don't want to have to expect, but you almost need to because he's such a high-energy guy, and then he's defending out of position. You see the foul there, just... No help from the backside. Absolutely, and trying to compensate. Goes for the block and gets all arm. Faulkner only a 41% free-throw shooter. And he makes it. 14, 15 for 35 on the season. That is, and that he is. drains the first one. So the odds are he's going to miss his next three. <laughs> Not a good <laughs> clip. And he missed. Oh. It goes off of who? Sly. And the Braves will keep it, leading by two. Jim Les wants a 30 second timeout. We'll keep it here. Tough call that both Salukis went for the ball and so did Marcello and it went off of Sly and Sly says I got hooked to yeah, the referee. You, you see him over there stating <laughs> his case with the refs but I don't think they're really trying to hear a whole lot. Uh, Jim Les calls the timeout. You know his troops have looked good as have Matt Painter's squad um, early on. This is a tight ball game as we expected. Uh, the preseason number three Bradley Braves without Philip Gilbert. Uh, bulk of their scoring. Uh, a guy who, you know, many people say is a possible NBA prospect. Brandon Moore is joining us on the broadcast today. Brandon, what you got? Guys, to keep 
up the intensity stay with the defensive pressure because with uh, Philip Gilbert their leading guard out the Bradley Braves are averaging 18 turnovers a game as opposed to 10 assists. So look for Coach Painter and the dogs to keep the intensity up for the entire game. Back All right. to you guys at the booth. That's a very good point Brandon because Bradley has turned it over a ton without Gilbert in the lineup. Gillingham comes around the horn. Can't get the shot off though and that's good defense Somerville. They don't want him to go baseline. They'll give him that. And Sly gets the board. They'll give Somerville that shot all game. Tatum. Dogs can tie it with a two. Southern in the motion. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Brooks, 17 footer, were not tied. That went down and came back out. JJ Twy. Nice crossover. Twy from the corner for three. No. Mar Somerville pushed off. They got to call that one. Yes. Yeah, and that's two. If I could see it from here, <laughs> it's easy to see underneath. Absolutely. They don't need a striped shirt to, to see that foul. Easy, easy loose ball call. I'm not sure if it was Corners or Willis, but one of them almost got pushed out of bounds. Now, they may have acted a little bit, but that's that's part of the game, too. Absolutely. you got to have some thespian skills to, to go along with your uh, hardwood skills. And Somerville has to sit down. He cannot afford to get three fouls before this half is over for Jim Les. So he brings back in Jason Faulkner and Michael Suggs and Marcello Robinson out of the game now. See if the dogs can get on a run here this final four minutes of the half. And Bradley, uh, uh, a new look for Bradley, uh, a fairly big lineup on the floor right now for the Braves. They're back in the matchup zone. Kick it to Turner on the wing. Corner and Brooks. DB for three. Just wouldn't go. Darren with the layup. Yes, and we're tied. Brooks with the layup, and Southern has tied it up at 24. Corn with a great defensive play. This is exemplary SIU basketball right now. Tenacious offense, uh, and then right back on the defensive end with a, a heady play. And a bump touch foul by Sylvester Willis. And we'll go to the free throw line to shoot one on the bonus. And that was just wrong place, wrong time. Rodney Watson didn't like that one. Bump a guy 80 feet from the basket. Second foul for Sylvester and Josh Warren, who played ever so slightly in the first couple minutes of the ball game, is back in. He'll play the final 324 and see if Southern can get something inside to Josh and get him going again. Yeah, Josh, a guy who was very skilled in the low post offensively, um, you know, can, can step out and hit a, a nice 10 foot jumper with ease. Suggs makes the first free throw. They're not pretty free throws, these guys shoot, but they do go in. Whatever gets the job done, I guess. If he makes this, we'll have a media timeout for the final 324. Michael Suggs trying to give the Braves a two point lead. Shot is up and good. And we've got a timeout on the floor. 324 left to go in the half. It's the Bradley Braves, 26. The Salukis coming back, 24. We'll be right back. Support at 7 o'clock. Support for WSIU Public Television. It takes a great deal of money to purchase tapes, operate a state-of-the-art uplink trunk, and broadcast this to you live. Please call with your generous pledge now, 1-800-745-9748, and thank you for your support. 26-24 is the score. Yeah, you talk about next up for the dogs, a trip to Illinois State as we see the replay of what happened right before we went to break. Darren Brooks uh, on the offensive end, getting his own rebound, putting it back. But the Illinois State Bradley, or the Bradley Illinois State stretch, historically one of the toughest two game stretches here for the SIU basketball team in recent years. Uh, I've been told by players they can't remember uh, ever winning these two games back to back. Salukis were trailing 21 16 at the last time out. They've cut it to two, and they are now shooting. 46%, Bradley now at 38%, and so they're now out rebounding the Braves by two. Tatum to Brooks, all oh, by, oh, he missed the bunny. And he commits a foul after the fact, and that is the thing that Matt Painter 
hates worse than anything, it accentuates what you just did. You commit a mistake, and then you commit another one. Exactly, and what you find yourself trying to do is compensate for the mistake you just made. You know, you, you miss an easy lay-in. Okay, well, I'll go and reach for the, the steal, and, and obviously just didn't work that time for Darren. And Gillingham gets to the line a lot. 119 free throws already this year, a 79% free throw shooter. He gets one in the bonus. Shot is up and good. He's part of the G-Men, Gillingham and Philip Gilbert. But it's only one half of the duo because Gilbert is still out for about another three or four games. Shot is short. Rebound by Brad Korn. Southern down by three, and they can tie it up. And what a scary team this Bradley squad is going to be when they get Philip Gilbert back. Watch out come NBC tourney time. Bradley back to the man defense now. Jamal working on J.J. Twy. Stetson to the wing and Turner. Korn had it top of the key, decides no. Lob to Josh Warren with the left hand and good. Josh gets it down. Big, big play there. And Gillingham will run the show now. Southern's done a nice job of this game so far stopping James Gillingham. 20 on the shot clock. And you can credit Stetson for the job on Gillingham for a bulk of the night. Uh, he's been in his face for, for a good part of the year. Oh, Josh, you didn't need to do that. Of course, Josh didn't need the elbow in the mouth either. <laughs> Just imperative for Josh Warren to, to become a better defensive player on the low block throughout the course of the year. I mean, offensively, he's a guy who, you know, I think at some point in his career is going to be capable of putting up, you know, a good 15 points per contest. But defensively, he's just got to step it up and, and get his game to that same level. Walker made the first one. He's two out of three in the game from the free throw line. Bradley back up by three, 29-26. Second shot is no good. Rebound to Josh Warren. Two-point game, Bradley 28, the Salukis 26. Southern had a chance to tie it a moment ago when Darren Brooks had a free throw. Couldn't get it down, though, or a layup. Tatum to the corner and Stetson. Kick it out to Brian Turner, decides not to shoot the three. Wow. Seven on the shot clock. Jamal Tatum for three. Yes! Jamal Tatum with a three, and Southern has the lead. And Jamal Tatum is going to be a very special player by the time all is said and done here at SIU. Just so quick and, and so heady on the offensive end. And there's close to 200 Saluki fans up here this afternoon, and they are enjoying the lead, 29-28. Bounce it to J.J. Twy, lob it down for, nice pass inside, knocked out of bounds to Southern as he tried to force it into Michael Suggs. Suggs doesn't like it at all. And Minute 19 to go, and the Salukis with the lead and the basketball. Try to extend it at halftime. Jamal Tatum. Took Turner, down low, Josh Warren. Back to Brian. Oh, it goes right through his hands. <laughs> Foul on Turner. And Gillingham will go to the free throw line to shoot two. It's the 10th team foul on the Salukis. First foul on Brian. And it went right through his hands because Gillingham got a piece of the ball as well. Absolutely. And Brian tried to get something going back on the defensive end. Um, you know, James Gillingham was already gone, though. I think he, he may have been better served just to go ahead and let him jam it down. So the Braves can take the lead if Gillingham can make both of these. Knocks down the first one. Knocks them both. Gillingham's got three points. It's all from the free throw line. Ten-second call. But the ball was touched. 
Maybe not. Doesn't matter, he's still got 10 seconds. Yeah, and that full court press just smothering the SIU ball handlers. Brian and Jamal could not get it across court. And it's tough. Southern didn't attack the press at all. J.J. Twy working on Jamal Tatum. To the corner in Gillingham. Twy has it knocked away. Suggs has it. Jumper, no. Rebound off of Brad Korn, and Bradley can hold for the last shot. And everything that can go wrong on loose balls has gone wrong for the Salukis. They've been the aggressor. They just haven't been able to come up with a basketball. Absolutely. You see hands flying. Normally, where a ball would be snatched out of the air tonight, it's just gone off the fingertips and out of bounds. And most times, it's, it's, it's been out of bounds on the Salukis. Lamar Owen back in. So is Somerville and Marcello Robinson for the final 24 seconds. Braves lead it by one, 30 to 29. And you got to hope here that Lamar Owen doesn't pick up his third foul against Somerville. Gillingham up high. Somerville's going to set a high pick. Shot clock down to 12. Double team to the corner, Robinson back to Somerville. No good. Rebound by the Salukis. So it's been an evenly played first half. Bradley had a lead. Bradley had a pretty big lead early on, but couldn't contain it. But the Salukis have the lead or trail it by now by one. It's 30 to 29. Let's go now to Brandon to talk to Coach Painter. Brandon. Go. Thanks a lot, Mike. I'm over here with Coach Painter. Kind of a nip and tuck half there, Coach. Kind of back and forth, a couple lead changes. Can you just give me some thoughts on the first half? Yeah, it was a tough first half. Went back and forth. Uh, uh, our guys showed some poise there late in the, in the first half, but we were shooting too many three-pointers, not getting the ball inside enough. We just need to keep gutting it out and playing hard and try to get the ball inside a little bit more. I saw you uh, talking to the ref there at the end of the half. Yeah, you know, you just got to battle. With these guys, they're tough. They go to the boards. And uh, sometimes, you know, you got to try to battle through the refs. Sometimes you get the call, sometimes you don't. All right. Thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck in the second half. All right, back to you guys at the booth. Thank you, Brandon. The score is Bradley 30, the Salukis 29. It's halftime, and we'll be back with some halftime features for you when we come back to the Civic Center after this. After Bradley at halftime leads the Salukis by a score of 30 to 29. And it's time now to take a look at the Missouri Valley Conference standings. Brought to you by Edward Jones, with more than 130 years of experience helping individuals build financial security. And there are the dogs on top, 5-0, and oh, all by themselves. The uh, Creighton Blue Jays won back at 4-1. Uh, and one. And then look at the log jam at 3-2. and two. Wichita, Northern Iowa, Drake, and SMS all at 3-2. and two. And Indiana State, Bradley, Evansville, Illinois State bring up the rear. But that those first six teams, uh, it's still early. And it, it could easily end up with SMS on top and Southern in sixth place. It's, uh, it's amazing how this race is going to go, Brandon. Sure could, sure could. I mean, this MVC race is wide open this year, and the early standings show you that if you compare them to the preseason uh, uh, picks that the MVC had. Uh, you know, Southern, of course, the fifth pick team. Uh, Wichita State was supposed to be up there at the top, and Creighton, of course, exactly where they should be at, too. So, like you said, you know, Northern Iowa has been surprising, uh, to say the least, so far this year. Uh, they upended Creighton, gave Creighton their only L on the season. So, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a big... Uh, spring here in the MVC for the dogs and for every other squad here in the Valley. So for the dogs to stay with it, they are 5-0. They need to win here today to go 6-0. Creighton plays later tonight against Evansville. Those are our Missouri Valley Conference standings brought to you by Edwards and jo Edward Jones, investing in you and your dreams. It is 30-29. The score of the Bradley Braves lead the Salukis at half. We're a little under three minutes to go at halftime, and we'll be back with the first half stats when we come back after this. Support for Saluki Basketball brought to you in part by First Cellular, a Southern Illinois company specializing in wireless data communication services throughout the communities of Southern Illinois. First Cellular is proud to be a continued supporter of SIU Saluki Athletics. Let's check the first half stats in this basketball game. It's an even game, and the stats are pretty even as well. As we check them out, there's the uh, score, 30 to 29. Higher field goal percentage by the Salukis, but the difference is the free throws. Bradley has made eight. The Salukis have only made two. Uh, free throws in the ball game. Turnovers, uh, not really a factor. Bradley doing very, very good, only committing four. 
Saluki's committing six, and Matt Painter will take six turnovers on the road anytime Absolutely. in a half for sure. Without doubt, Mike. And I think uh, another huge stat to take a look at the 36% field goal shooting uh, by the Bradley Braves. SIU, of course, 7 0 when they hold their opponents under 45% from the field. So uh, a good stat for the dogs as we head to the second half. Support for this program comes from, we have some more stats, rebounds. Saluki's leading at 18 to 17. Both have nine assists. And look at the point leaders. Somerville with seven, Darren Brooks with six. So nobody uh, dominating this game by any stretch. Support for this program comes from the SIU Alumni Association with a reminder that two complimentary tickets are available to alumni members at select Southern Illinois businesses and banks for the January 25th home game against Indiana State. Call 453-2408. For more information, we are underway in the second half. Dogs trail it by one. They go with their starting five. The only difference for Bradley is uh, Robinson is starting in place of Chris Mraz in the second half. Darren Brooks' first shot in the second half does not go down, and here we go. And you know, I thought it was questionable for Bradley to start Mraz over Robinson in the first place, being that Robinson has the experience, you know, running the show. Gillingham. Gets inside, really, for the first time in the ball game. He's got five. That's his first field goal. And the first time you want to make that the last time if you're SIU. You cannot afford for him to start heating up here in the second half. And the reason that Mraz started was is Robinson doesn't practice. And Jimmy Les rewards those that are able to practice with playing time and starting time. As it should be. I, I can definitely understand and respect that. Brian Turner on the wing to Sly. Back to Korn. Turner hasn't hit a three yet in this ball game. There he goes. BT knocks it down. Brian, uh, an interesting stat about the three-point is, oh, wow. <laughs> Had an interesting stat about the three-point percentage for Brian Turner, but I'll save it. What a block by Sly Willis. Yeah, Brian has been on fire here in the MVC, though. 30 for 58 from beyond the arc in MVC regular season games in his career. Good for an astonishing 51% of the shots. Braves back up after the goaltending call. To the wing and Corn. Brad gets Somerville in the air, shoots a shot and gets it down. Brad Korn get Mar got Marcella Somerville in the air and he can't afford to get his third foul early in this half either. And we're tied again at 34. Twy working on Brian Turner. Wide with a high arcing shot, no good. Here come the dogs on transition. Sly in the corner. Nice play by Silvestri, couldn't finish though. Faulkner pushes off on Korn, and Brad gets the steal. Very nicely done. And the dogs get it back on offense. BT, no, way off. Oh. And it's tipped back out to Brian Turner. And Matt Painter wants the dogs to set it up. Yeah, something they've failed to do a whole lot in the half court offense. They, they've come down and shot a whole lot of threes and kind of gave up so on, they're on not, their set offense. So look, he's not, not doing much on offense here. Six on the shot clock. Brooks misses again. Tip no. Rebound to Faulkner. Here comes Marcello Robinson. Gillingham. Not at 34, just under 17 minutes to go. Dogs trying to go to 6-0 in the league. Bradley looking for their second conference win. Gillingham. All the way back over to J.J. Twy. Now at Somerville, working on Sly. Sylvester gets the steal. Nice defense by Southern. Slide of corn, wide open three. Yeah! Oh. BK with a big three. Jimmy Les wants a timeout. He didn't like the defensive on that play. And the Salukis get their second lead of the ball game. It's 37 to 34 off the Brad Corn three. Yeah, and we haven't seen that very many times uh, here in Carbondale. It's only the second three the Salukis have made today. They're two out of 11. And Turner missed his uh, first one of the or second one of the second half badly, but BK came around and knocked that one down. Hey, 
Welcome, everybody, to the telecast. It's good to have you with us. We apologize beyond belief for the technical difficulties, but you came in at a perfect time. The Salukis just took the lead, 37 to 34 on a Brad Corn three-pointer. The game has gone back and forth throughout, and Bradley led by as much as six and seven points in the first half. They led by one at halftime, 30 to 29, but the dogs have come out here in the second half, played very well, and just took the lead on a three-pointer. My partner for the broadcast is Brandon Thompson, and Brandon has been a nip and tuck game back and forth, but. The Salukis with their shooting percentage going up and Bradley's going down, things are finally, looks like the tide might be turning. Finally, absolutely. And things look like they would be rocky here in Peoria for the dogs early on. Uh, Bradley came out and pounded it down low time after time. Marcellus Somerville scoring points inside. It, just an unbelievable early performance for Bradley, but SIU now, like I said, the tide has turned. They seem like they're getting more comfortable in their half-court set in the shows. Our next televised game will be Wednesday night, God willing, at Illinois State University, January 21st. We'll be on the air at 7 o'clock right here on WSIU-TV Channel 8 against the Illinois State Redbirds. And the Salukis beat Illinois State earlier this year at the SIU Arena. Southern tried to make this central Illinois swing, which is very difficult to do to win back-to-back -back games, but you can't win both if you don't win the first one. And that's what they're attempting to do here tonight. 16-27 left to go in the ball game in regulation, and the Salukis have a lead of 37 to 34. There's Gillingham earlier on getting his first basket of the ball game. James Gillingham only has five points. Yeah. Robinson, oh, there. tipped away by Turner, and he gets fouled. Brian Turner picks up his second personal foul. We also want to say a big hello to Ed and Gloria Davis, who are having a basketball tailgate party back at the studios. Hello, welcome. Sorry for the delay, but hopefully it'll be a good ending. Robinson misses badly. Here comes Stetson. Transition basketball for the Saluki. Stetson in the lane. Out to Korn. Oh, Brad gave up the three. Dishes it down to Warren, and Josh scores. And that's what you got to love about Josh Warren for all the heat he takes about, you know, maybe his lax defensive uh, skills. Offensively, he's going to be an unstoppable force in a matter of months here for SIU. Gillingham couldn't get the shot off. To the wing, Somerville for three. Yes. Dogs got caught playing out of position on the defensive end on that one. They double team down low. Bradley swung the ball faster than the Slukies could get it going. Stetson up high. Down low to Josh. Stripped away by Gillingham, and the Dogs will keep it. But we've come to our first media timeout of the second half. 15-23 left to go in the ball game. The Salukis on top of the Bradley Braves. It's 39-30. Back to Peoria, the Salukis lead the Braves 39-37. want to mention that expenses for the broadcast of these away games are higher than ever before. Help us know how much you care about seeing these games by making a generous pledge right now. It's 1-800-745-9748. Brandon Moore is with us as well this afternoon. Brandon on the sidelines, what you got? Hey, thanks, guys. Just a note as the Salukis try to make their move to 6-0 in the conference, no coach has ever won their first trip here to Bradley, and Coach Painter seeks to do that. I take that back. We've had one coach to do that, to make their first win at Bradley. That was Joe Godfrey at the Robertson Fieldhouse. Back to you guys at the booth. Thanks, Brandon. But nobody has won here in the Civic Center in their first try, and this would be a major coup for Coach Painter, whether whether Bradley's at full strength or not, as you can see, it is a very, very tough place to play. Dogs lead it by two and try to extend it here. Shot clock is at 15. As the ball is knocked out of bounds, Corn for three, yeah! Wow. corn has got 12, he's the leading score in the ball game. Foul, Jason Faulkner fouled by Josh Warren. Josh doing all he can, but he gave up the baseline. The baseline is your friend. If you stick a foot out of bounds, they can't go underneath on you. Absolutely well put it. You know, Josh, just a, a guy who's going to be a body for the dogs. And size is something that they need, but he's a very skilled player as well. Um, just did not get the best effort there uh, defensively from him. Here's the baseline move by Faulkner. There's Josh bellying up, and Faulkner able to get in there, just like you see there, draw the foul. Faulkner's hit his first free throw. He's got nine points. And the unlikely Brave has 10 points. He and Marcello Robinson, both with, in double figures. 
It's surprising. We haven't seen Gillingham. We we haven't seen well, we've seen Somerville, you know, for, for some parts of the game, but for the most part it's been all Marcella Robinson. Somerville's only got seven. Back in the, the zone defense are the Braves. Two three. Stetson for three. Hey, the dogs are heating up from outside. Stetson Hairston knocks down a three. That's his 11th three of the year. Marcello Robinson almost loses it out of bounds. Dogs lead it by six. And they throw it away. Gillingham off of him out of bounds. A nice pressure for the dogs. And now you see where that strategy comes into play. The defense creates the offense for the dogs. And whether it's off of turnovers or whether it's just, you know, pressuring your guy into making a uh, a boneheaded play like that, the dogs are, are creating offense for themselves. Seventh turnover for the Braves. Down low, it's Lamar Owen, gets out of trouble. Stetson again, he's short this time, rebound to Lamar. No, Josh with a foul, no, and a foul. And Josh Warren will go to the free throw line. Fouls on Jason Faulkner, and the Bradley fans go boo. Boo. But it's a foul on Faulkner and Josh Warren gets two free throws. Here's Stetson's with the shot. Stetson, yeah, that three's off. Lamar tries to get it. No, and then Josh, as we didn't see there, he goes and grabs the board and gets hacked. On Josh the missed the free throw, though. He's a 75% around the year. Pretty high clip for a big guy. Hits that one. Josh Warren hits the shot. He's got five. The dogs lead by seven. They trailed by one at half. They've outscored the Braves by eight here in the second half. Cello Robinson working on Brian Tarr. Oh, is he quick? And loses it out of bounds as he put the ball at Somerville's feet. Not the place to put it to a big guy. Yeah, tough break for Marcello too, uh, especially when Robinson broke the you know broke the SIUD and, and broke the broke the zone there. Uh, you know, just a, an unbelievable skill to have as a point when you have the quickness to do that and just didn't make it happen with the pass. Jamal Tatum came into the game just last uh, last break there for Brian Turner. Sly, little jump hook. No, gets his rebound, but fouls from behind. And you know what, Sly, not being an offensive-minded player, just showed right there. I mean, he will score, and he likes to score, obviously, as does any player. But, you know, he had the chance to go right up with the ball and, and score there, and he was kind of tentative with it and waited, and he, he waited too long. Yep, he should have shot earlier and then decided to try to force some contact and didn't make it happen. But Southern still leads it by 7, 46-39 the score. Joey Paul out on the wing to Gillingham. He's yet to really look for his shot. Somerville. No, can't get it to go. And a good rebound by Sylvester Willis. Yeah, and I think Bradley's strategy backfiring now. They think they can just feed it down low and punish SIU, but the big guy's not coming up with the inside shots. Saluki's running their motion against the man-to-man -man defense. Somerville's got three fouls. Nice steal by Jason Faulkner. To Gillingham. Foul by Brad Korn from behind. That's a good foul. It's really a good foul. It's only Brad's first foul of the ball game. And it prevented what would probably be an easy layup by Gillingham. Sure, and you'll take that first foul, like you said, for Brad on the evening. And that obviously would have been something that would have got the people on their feet here at the Carver Center, not what you need if you're a Saluki. Joey Paul on the wing, gets inside. Jumper, no, but he's fouled. It's going to be on Stetson. His second personal foul. Fifth team foul on the Salukis, and here's the replay. Yeah, you see the, the foul there, Stetson just, again, a very aggressive defensive player, which pays off in most situations, but right there he gets a little bit, uh, too little ball, too much arm, and that'll be a foul. Joey Paul's a good free throw shooter. He's hit five out of six this year, making six out of seven. He's got four points. Thirteen oh seven left to go in the ball game. Saluki's lead it by six, forty-six to forty. Joey Paul is a six-three sophomore out of Highland Park, Illinois. Gets his fifth point. Dogs lead it by five. Tony Young, Darren Brooks back in the ball game for Southern. DB up top working on Gillingham. Tony Young lost it. Turnover by the Salukis. 
Suggs and Twive in. Gillingham and Faulkner out for the Braves. And right now, SIU, you know, despite that last blunder there by Tony Young, they, you know, you want to just continue playing the way you've played the entire second half. But it's not Tony good, got the it. turnover. <laughs> He pressured Marcello Robinson, and Marcello knocked it out of bounds, and that's what constant defensive pressure will do. And what a blown chance by Bradley. Now Southern's got to take advantage of this. Yeah, some redemption for Tony Young there after losing it on the offensive end, gets it right back for the dogs. Corn working on Somerville. Kicks it out to Tony. Around the horn to Jamal Tatum. Brooks all the way to the hoop for two. DB's got eight. Southern leads it by seven, 48-41. Robinson. Knocked away by Tony Young. Just constant pressure by Tony. Tony Young, a guy, you know, coming off the bench. And when you, you're coming off the bench, of course, you'll have energy. And that's exactly what the coach expects from you. High energy action on the defensive end for Tony Young. 23 on the shot clock. Twy with it. Back to Jamal. Robinson working on Jamal Tatum to the corner. Some really likes that shot. And for a big man to be able to stroke the ball like that is, is uncanny, and it's not something you're going to see a whole lot of. A Bradley big guy wants to play in the post. Bradley wants its crowd to get in the game. They thought the three by Somerville would do it, and Southern worked on that play on defense last night to try to deny Somerville that pass in the corner. Didn't work, and he drained the three. 48-44, that was a big three by Somerville, but the Dogs still lead by four. To the wing, top of the key in Jamal Tatum. Tony Young, he'll hit that shot. Too strong. Rebound controlled by Joey Paul. Bradley can cut it to two or one with a three. Knocked away by Tony Young and fouled on Tony Young. Yeah, you know when you got Tony Young in the paint trying to defend against a big guy, that's not, it's not the situation the dogs called for. Media timeout, 11.37 to go. It's the Salukis leading the Braves, 48-44. We'll be back. And select Southern Illinois businesses and banks for the January 25th home game against Indiana State. Call 453-2408 for more information. The score is the Salukis 48 and the Bradley Braves 44. And we also want to remind you that support for Saluki basketball is brought to you in part by our friends at Vogler Motor Company, Mark Williams Outdoor Equipment, Banterra Bank, Venegoni Harrell Distributing LLC, Golden Eagle Distributing, and B&G Venegoni Distributing. 710 Bookstore and the Saluki Connection, SI Family Dentistry, Gentry Couch Incorporated, Brian's Heating and Air Conditioning, Daniel and Son Mechanical Contractors and Garabawi Heating and Cooling, and by the Southern and Central Illinois Laborers District. Salukis on defense to the corner in Somerville. Double team, triple team, throws it out to J.J. Twy. Back to Somerville. Faulkner, nowhere to go, Michael Suggs rather. Back out to Somerville. Good defensive uh, ploy by the Salukis in the first 15 seconds of this shot clock. Now it's Marcello Robinson working on Tatum, trying to get it to Somerville. It's Suggs, he bumbles, under 10 on the shot clock. Robinson's gonna penetrate. There's that reverse, no good, and Sly gets the rebound. Marcello Robinson so quick. I mean, that's a shot that easily could have went in for, for the Braves. What a great defensive sequence by the Salukis on that one. Absolutely. Brooks to Hairston, over to Jamal Tatum. Salukis lead it by four. Sly. Back out to Stetson. Fouled from behind by J.J. Twy. Fouled from behind, though, Salukis will get a new shot clock. It's only the second foul on the Braves here in the second half. Yeah. Gillingham quickly back in for Marcello Robinson. Yeah. Lamar Owen back into the game for the Salukis for Josh Warren. And let's see if Gillingham starts to try to make his presence known on offense for Bradley. Yeah, something that the Braves definitely could use. Uh, Gillingham only with five points. 
Sylvester Willis gets the nice feed inside from Darren Brooks for two, and the Saluki's lead is back up to 6, 50 to 44. Again, we want to say hello to Ed and Gloria Davis having their basketball tailgate party back at the studios at WSIU-TV. Hope you enjoy the broadcast as Bradley turns it over. You're enjoying it a little bit more right now as Somerville turns it over. So the Salukis get control of the ball again. Turner will check in for Jamal Tatum. And Southern will try to build on the six point lead. Their biggest lead was seven at 46-39. About time now for the dogs to, to put something together offensively. If they really, you know, uh, are gonna win this game, it's time to start sealing the deal right about now. Hand off to Turner, top of the key. Brooks coming off the pick. Short jumper, yeah, oh, Darren Brooks. And that's offensive run to perfection. DB now with 10. Here comes Twy. Gillingham up top to the left wing. Joey Paul knocked again and turned over. And the dogs have big numbers. Hairston for three, no off. Rebound to Sly. Fouled, and it's going to be Bradley basketball. Yeah, not a great sequence of events for the SIU offense. Uh, if you're Matt Painter, I don't know if you actually want Stetson coming down and gunning a three-pointer. Not when he got a four-on-one. Exactly. And Matt Painter's asking the referee, wasn't that guy on Sly's back? 52-44. Dogs lead it by eight. It's their biggest lead of the ballgame. Twy working on Turner. BT, constant pressure on J.J. Twy. Charge. Oh, they call the block. Oh. On Lamar, his third personal foul. Questionable call, to say the least, there by the refs. Wow. Questionable, questionable call on the floor. Twy hurt his head as he went to the floor hard. Brad Korn will check in for Lamar. Here's the replay. We'll see if the feet were set. Yeah, maybe uh, not. Oh, yeah, I guess. Pretty good call. Pretty decent call indeed. He shuffled the feet, so. We couldn't see it from that angle. And Twy to the free throw line. Hits. J.J. Twy on the year, 62 percenter. Hits his first one, brings Bradley back to within seven. 52-45, Saluki's lead it. 9.32 to go. Makes them both. Free throws are keeping the Braves in this basketball game. 52-46, and the crowd is trying to get into the game. Corn with it out high. Hand off to Brian Turner. To Brad. Foul underneath. No shot. Foul is on Somerville, I believe. That'll be his third. Yes, it is. Marcellus Somerville gets his third foul with 9.18 to go. It's the third team foul on the Braves. See if Somerville could pick up his fourth. That would be huge. <laughs> that would be a nice thing for SIU fans. Uh, Somersville is. Has Turner's got to get it in. Does to Brad Corn. To Sly. Southern with an all new shot clock, so they'll take their time. They lead it by six, 52 46. And this is how you want to execute if you're SIU. No hurry. You know, you Red. got a six point lead. To the wing and Turner for three. No. Rebound. Hustled by Darren Brooks. Fouled by JJ Twy. His second foul, fourth team foul, and the dogs get another 35 seconds. Brad gave up a three, kicked it to Turner with a wide open three, and just didn't get it, but hustled by Darren Brooks for the rebound. Yeah, and you know, Brian, I mean, I, I'd take that shot if I were him. He's looked very comfortable from beyond the three-point arc as of late, but that one just didn't rattle down. Bradley in the zone, back to the 2-3 matchup. Turner's in the corner for the dogs. Down to Sly. Dribbles out of it. Swinging around. BT. Now, I love this look for SIU as opposed to the rest of the Down game. Down to Sly. Working on Suggs. No. Oh. Who's going to get the ball? It's going to be Saluki basketball. Big time Only play. Only three seconds on the shot clock, though. Big time play down low there. Three seconds on the shot clock, and I don't know that they are aware of that yet. Even into Brad in the corner and shoot it up. Oh, they got Stetson inside. Out of the yeah. They'll take Stetson instead. 
You know, I spoke to Stetson earlier in the week and asked him, had he, you know, gotten his confidence back 100% since being suspended early? He said on the offensive end, not quite yet. On the defensive end, though, he's, he's all there. That was a huge bucket. Absolutely. Twy inside. And Michael Suggs got it to fall. He's got four, and he almost missed that one, too. Yeah, it was close. He was very lackadaisical <laughs> with the way he laid it up on the rim. Six-point game. The Braves still trying to do something to get the crowd into it, but the Salukis have matched everything. Harrison on the wing, 15 on the shot clock. DB working on Gillingham. Down low to Brad Korn, to Turner. Around to Stetson, lob it down to Sly. Foul on Sly, his fourth personal foul. That hurts. That hurts SIU because now if you're mad painting your face with the decision, well, you know, what, what do you do with Sly? I mean, obviously you need him inside, especially on that interior defensively. And welcome back to the Civic Center in Peoria. The Dogs lead the Bradley Braves 54 to 48. 7.35 left to go in the ball game. Brandon Moore has been with us all afternoon. Brandon, how are you? Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Brandon. I'm over here. Two notes coming from Coach Painter's timeout. He told the guys to keep up the intensity on defense. It's caused several turnovers on Bradley's end of the floor and got him several easy baskets. Also, to take care of the ball on their end and seal the deal over here. Back to you guys at the booth. All right. The Salukis, when they don't turn the ball over are a pretty good basketball team and Bradley when they don't turn it over has won all of their ball games they've won eight games there's Michael Suggs uh, layup on that other end and here's the pass down low where Suggs watch him just kind of finger roll it it almost rolled off the other side almost finger rolled it on out there uh, lucky basket to say the least for Mike Suggs when Bradley commits less turnovers than its opponent they've got eight wins they're eight and eight this year so that tells you right there what happens when they turn the ball over too much. Salukis lead it by six, 54-48. Sylvester Willis is out. Lamar Owen came back in for Sylvester. Sly's going to sit for a while with four fouls. Suggs to the corner. Around the horn it goes. Joey Paul with it now. Gillingham top of the key. Gets in, blocked. Oh. Three on the shot clock, wow. Somerville doesn't know it. His shot's blocked. And the Salukis get the ball back. What a play defensively and by Brad And DB stepped on the boundary. And exactly what Matt Painter said to do, they didn't do, they didn't take care of the ball. Yeah, Turnovers nice. in the basketball game. Bradley with 11, Southern Illinois with nine. Now Southern Illinois with 10. And a waste of an excellent defensive sequence by the dogs. Just a blocked shot on the interior by Brad Korn. Uh, not a daily occurrence. Gillingham. Foul on Lamar Owen. That's going to be his fourth. So fouls becoming a big problem for the Salukis. Sure thing. And, you know, you, you got to keep some sort of composure here. You're on the road. You're only up by six. There's still plenty of time left in this ball game. What you don't want to do is, you know, start making costly errors. Gillingham hits. James Gillingham has six points. Four of them from the free throw line. Lamar Owen out. Tatum in. Brad Korn is going to go down to play the, uh, the four spot. Southern going to go with four guards. Should be interesting. You know, it gives you speed. Makes them both. It gives you speed against this lineup, but it hurts you. Four-point game again. Bradley in a man-to-man -man now. To Korn, right wing at Stetson. Brooks with a layup. And see, that, that's where the four-guard lineup is going to help SIU on the offensive end because so quick, so able to get around some of those, you know, bigger guys for Bradley, Marcellus Summersville, and, and, and Mike Suggs. And Faulkner is not a huge guy underneath that Stetson can't guard him. DB working with Gillingham. What do they call a foul? They call the foul. Foul's on number 11. You know, I'm, I'm convinced they just like to see Gillingham at the line. <laughs> Here's the drive. 
They got him. I guess they call it on Darren Brooks. And Gillingham again to the free throw line, and this is where he can kill teams. Sure, the most free throws made and attempted in the Valley. Clock stops, he gets points. J.J. <laughs> Twy coming back in for Suggs, and now Bradley will match the Saluki's fourth guard lineup. Sure but the it. advantage is all SIU in this case. Absolutely, and Twy hasn't hasn't you know done anything really eye-opening thus far this game, but he's been solid. He's played his role in the offensive defense. Gillingham hits them both, a four-point game again. Here they come, the fans, that is. Stetson with it. Lob to Brooks. Darren can't hold it. Steps out of bounds. Bradley basketball, turnover. And now more than ever, it's so important for the dogs to maintain their composure, to come down, to run set offense, to, to be very, you know, methodical in what they're doing on the offensive end. Plenty of time. Six minutes to go in the ball game. Dogs lead it by four, 56-52. Marcello behind the back to Gillingham. J.J. Twy. Twy in. Scores. Getting loud in here, Mike. Timeout. Matt Painter will keep it here. 5.33 to go. The Salukis, good time to call a timeout. It quiets the crowd down a little bit. It allows Matt Painter to talk to his guys. Bradley did a good job on offense the last two trips down the floor. Got the ball where they wanted it. J.J. Twy, the freshman, with a nice move inside. They're within two. Should think it, you know, great, great, great timeout uh, by Matt Painter because this crowd was just getting a uh, motivated everybody was out of their seats uh the the hand clapping was starting and it was just getting a little loud in peoria so the coach is going to calm things down uh not a bad strategy salukis have the basketball 30 seconds left on the shot clock 533 on the game clock and the lead of 56 to 54. southern has corn turner hairston brooks and sylvester willis back in the basketball game So now, Southern with the size advantage because they've got to have Joey Paul guarding Sly Willis. See if the crowd stays in it here. Southern needs a basket to quiet him down. Corn wide open. In and out, rebound to Sly, fouled by Gillingham. Only the fifth team foul on Bradley, so the Dogs will get a whole nother possession. Gillingham's second personal foul. And you see the hack. Sly here. with great position. Oh, yeah, there was the hack. Oh, yeah. Now they have to counter with Faulkner to come in for Joey Paul because somebody's got to guard Sly. I've been really surprised by Gillingham so far tonight. I don't know if it's kind of the lingering effects of the injury he's dealt with here recently or what, but just, you know, we expected such an offensive output from Gillingham, and we really haven't seen that. And then on the defensive end, you know, he's struggled at times as well. Nice counter by Matt Painter to get Josh Warren back in because he's got three and a half inches on Faulkner. See if they can get Josh down low with a, with a bucket. Corn working on Somerville. Up and under, it's good and a oh. foul. Big time play by Brad Korn, and he got the fourth foul on Marcellus Somerville. Absolutely huge inside for Brad Korn. That's not where he's really known for doing his best work, but uh, you know, the post for a 6'9 guy, it has to be somewhat like home, and he shows it right there. Now he needs to nail the free throw. Give Southern a five point edge. He does. Salukis lead it by five, and Somerville has four fouls. Here come the Braves. Marcello Robinson didn't expect to see probably this much playing time, but he has to. Gillingham to Twy. Lob it down, and it's thrown away. J.J. Twy throws it away over Marcella Somerville. Salukis lead it by five and have the basketball. And you have to wonder with Bradley how much of this, you know, carelessness with the ball a lot of times can be attributed to the absence of Philip Gilbert. Twelfth uh, turnover of the ball game for Bradley. To Korn. 
They want to get it down to Josh Warren. Because he's got Faulkner guarding him. He's got four inches on Jason Faulkner. High pick by Josh. Brooks for three. Terrible shot. And Josh Warren gets an easy rebound. Terrible shot, good rebound. And Look what I found. Yeah, exactly. They, they negate each other. And now Jimmy Les has to call time as the Dogs have come back and stormed out to a seven-point lead with 4.16 left to go in the basketball game. And it was good defensive pressure, nice execution, and a little luck. Yeah, defense creates offense. We've been saying it all game, and that's been SIU's strategy thus far on the season. Um, they're looking good here in the, in the clutch, um, and, and Bradley just careless with the ball, feeding it inside, but it's not working. Saluki's leaded score is 61 to 54. We want to remind you that this afternoon's basketball game is being brought to you in part by here on WSI. Score. The Braves with a the basketball. They've got Faulkner, Marcello Robinson, Somerville, Gillingham, and J.J. Twy. Turner defensively on Marcello Robinson, who's had a very nice game. Gillingham has not looked to score, but has sure gotten to the free throw line a lot. To the wing and Twy, looking down low for Faulkner. Spin, and he gets it to go. Five point game, under four minutes to go. We're just ahead of immediate timeout. Turner, to the wing and Hairston. Stetson, one on one, nobody there. Back door, good and a foul. Oh, they called a charge. Oh my goodness. Wow. Wow. I don't think there's any way Faulkner got there in time. I'd like to see the replay we on that We might be one. able to see it when we come back. Yeah. 3.39 left to go in the ball game. It's the Saluki 61, Bradley 56. We'll be back. Central Illinois. Saluki's lead it by five with 3.39 to go. Support for the basketball is brought to you in part by First Cellular, a Southern Illinois company specializing in wireless data communication services throughout the communities of Southern Illinois. First Cellular is proud to be a continued supporter of SIU Saluki Athletics. Brandon Moore, this has been a great ball game. What you have for us? Hey, thanks once again, Mike. Over here on the sidelines with 3.39 left to play. As the Salukis look to make their conference record to 6-0, and they're looking to break a record in the conference and for the school with the 6-0 record. This will be the first time that the Salukis have ever gone 6-0 starting out the conference. Thank you. You Thank bet. You and, what the a, booth, guys. and what a great way to get it started with a road win at Bradley. The, Matt Painter would be the first head coach as a first-year head coach to win in the Civic Center here in Peoria. 61-56 the score. 3.39 left to go. And let's see what happens here down the stretch. See Cello Robinson. Rob yeah, Cello Robinson running the point for Bradley. I don't think we'll see anyone else man the point guard position for the rest of the game. Good steal by Darren Brooks. Oh, and Darren, he turned it right back over. He just should have held on to the basketball. But Southern now has the clamp down on defense. Five point lead. Gillingham. Gillingham it's looking like go. he, yeah, he's thinking about ISOing it up with Darren. Somerville. Nice pass down to Cello. Back in the corner to Somerville. No, rebound to Sly. Big rebound by Sly. Good defense by the Dogs. Leading by five. They need a bucket here. Sure doing. Lovely, lovely, lovely display of defense uh, down there on Marcellus Somersville. Bradley in the man-to-man. -man. Turner wide open. Oh. DB coming off the, off the wing. Back up to BT. 10 on the shot clock. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Corn, turn, or Brooks rather, turns it over again. Trying to get it to Willis in the corner, and he was all alone. To the corner and Twy. Down to Somerville, yes. Three point game, 2.15 to go. And they're on their feet now. Now is the time. And the dogs will call a timeout. Another good timeout by Coach Painter. 
Silences the crowd. 207 left to go. Three point game. And Darren Brooks did everything right on the last two series except he had timeouts he could have taken when he stole the ball on the other end. And on the offensive end, he got himself up in the air again, got himself in trouble, and had to get rid of the basketball and turned it over. Yeah, and you, I don't think you credit adrenaline for something like that, but you know, when Darren is, is a, a player who's experienced as he is, he's a junior, of course, and as talented as he is, you have to think, you know, maybe just the flow of the game and maybe just the excitement of everything going on here in a tight, close game on the road just got the best of them. 61-58 to score. Bradley has four players in double figures. The Slookies have one, two, two guys in double figures, but a lot of guys have scored in this game. They've spread the wealth around pretty well. Brooks has 12, and Brad Korn has 15 points. Coach Painter drawing up the offense now. Pretty good at drawing plays up and getting uh, getting conversions for scores out of timeouts. We'll see what happens here, and then we'll see if Southern can clamp down on the defensive end, get a stop on the other side, because the clock will be under two minutes to go when Bradley gets the basketball off on offense. Yeah, Coach Painter drawing things up on the offensive end. Somerville, yeah. Sly had to leave Malone. He's got four fouls. Absolutely. Uh, you know, a smart play defensively by Sly, despite the fact that they scored. You don't want to go for a block and risk getting number five. Stetson will trigger it here on the wing. Dogs want to steal another one on the road. It'll be their sixth road win of the year. If they can pull it out. More importantly, they have the lead. Sylvester with it. Round the horn it goes. DB with it. 12 on the shot clock. To Turner. Gets in. To Stetson. To Brad. Throws it away. Oh, Brad tough, gave tough. up. A, Brad gave up a 10-foot jump shot. Nobody near him to try for a layup. Lamar Owen is going to be able to check in. Coming in for Brad Corn. A three ties the game. 1:45 to go. Brad out. Here we go. Robinson with it. Dogs lead it by three. See who's going to win this thing down the stretch. Yeah, 138 left. Crunch time now for SIU. Gillingham to the hoop, fouled or blocked rather. Rebound, miss to the Salukis. Oh. oh, that was huge. Big time play, big time play for the dogs down there. Brad Corn right back in the game. Was that about a 30 second breather there for Brad? Ooh, Korn? That was huge. They had two easy looks. I won't say easy, a lot of bodies flying around, but to what should be makeable shots for the Braves that don't go down. Sure thing. And Southern can control the ball till it's under a minute to go with a three-point lead. And a bucket would be very, very big. Stetson. Gets rid of it to Darren. Yeah. Game clock approaches one minute. 12 on the shot clock. DB with a double screen. To Stetson. Big three. Yeah! Time three for Huge Stetson. Huge three Hairston. for Stetson Hairston, and the Dogs lead it by six. There are two possessions on this one. It's a 30-second timeout by Jim Les. 30-second timeout, and what a monster three by Stetson out yeah. of the wing. Belleville, Illinois is going nuts right now. Jimmy Les trying Huge to draw three. up a play. 57 seconds left. They're down two possessions. Look at Stetson. He's at 22 feet, nothing but the bottom of the net. He's got nine points in the ball game. Here it is again from the wing. Boom. Yeah, he's finally getting his swagger back offensively. A guy who put up a good, about a good 11 points per contest last year with the Dogs. He's not struggled offensively, but you know he's kind of helped the team more on the defensive end so far this year since returning from suspension. But this game, nine points and a nice showing for Stetson. Really, really big, and some people in the uh, Civic Center are leaving. They're only down six points. And some people are heading for the exits. I don't understand that. Maybe they want to beat that team Peoria traffic. Explosive. <laughs> Cello with it. He's got a hustle. They cut him off, and that's good. To the wing, and Twy. Jumper, short, rebound. Stetson has it. Off of Bradley, Saluki basketball. Another big defensive play by the Salukis. They lead it by six. They have the basketball only 46 seconds to go in the game. Yeah, now if you're SIU, you can look to start sealing this thing from the free throw line. 
uh, you know, absolutely necessary to sink free throws to win a close game. You know, the intentional fouls are going to start coming sometime soon. And I don't know the chance if you of can SIU. Hear, you can hear the uh, Saluki fans. There's close to 300 here today. Stetson get oh, and he's just wrapped up on the outside by Marcello Robinson, and Southern is in the bonus, will go to the other end and shoot one of the bonus for the final 45 seconds in this basketball game. Here comes Lamar back in the game. Offense for defense for the Salukis. Lamar and Sly come back in. Tatum and Korn come out, and Stetson will shoot one of the bonus. If he hits one, if he hits this first one, it'll be a three possession game. So this first one, very critical. Absolutely, yeah. you put your squad up by a full seven here if you sink this one. Yes. He's in double figures now with 10, and he's got the last four points. The dogs lead it by seven. And there's the ball going off of Marcello Robinson out of bounds. Despite that, Marcello Robinson on an absolutely masterful night here, running the point uh, a whole lot of minutes in for injured Phil Philip Gilbert. Uh, he's played big minutes, and, and he's produced for Bradley, but uh, SIU just looking to be too much here as we wind things down. Because of our difficulties with the first half, we're going to re-air the basketball game tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock. Tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock, you can see the game in its entirety on WSIU. Oh, shot blocked. Out of control. With it, and they just wrapped up the basketball game. And this is an excited bunch of Saluki players. As we said coming into the game, they've only won one out of the last five trips here to the Civic Center. But they've wrapped up another one right now. They lead it by eight and have a chance to stretch this thing to uh, 10 points with Brian Turner at the free throw line. Yeah, and you can't take anything away from Bradley's effort tonight. Uh, without Philip Gilbert, their heart and soul, a uh, guy who's putting 20 points up for contest. That's a huge chunk missing um, in this Bradley club, a very skilled ball club and a team that, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, later in the season. Dogs lead by nine. The dogs lead by 10. And folks, the final score is not going to indicate how close this was throughout. Gillingham blocked by Sly, and Sly falls out of the game. But I don't, <laughs> Sly's chuckling. He'll come out of the game. You know, what, what better way to take your last foul? Don't take it just with a little kind of ticky-tack <laughs> foul slap on the wrist. Go for the big rejection. <laughs> Knock it out of bounds if you have to. Sly comes out. He's a happy camper, though. The dogs are going to get the win, leading by 10. Looking ahead now for SIU, though, uh, next up, Illinois State, a team that the Dogs did beat uh, earlier in the year. But this two-game stretch, Bradley and Illinois State, tough for the Dogs historically. There's Sly going up. Boy, it almost looked like Gillingham pushed off a little bit with that arm to mm -hmm. create some space. And Gillingham, you see the talent and you see the ability to slash to the basket that Gillingham possesses, but just this game offensively never got it going uh, much to the light of Matt He's only Painter got one the field goal the whole game. Right. Hits the free throw. He's at double figures with 10, and the Dogs did a great job on Somerville this second half. He's only got five points in the second half. I mean, to hold him to 12 mm -hmm. when you're averaging 16, he did a great job. Exactly, especially after he looked near unstoppable in the first half with the inside-outside game. Gillingham missed the second. Suggs fouls Brad Korn, and Jimmy Les hasn't given up because he's still fouling, and Korn will come down and shoot. Again, I believe one of the bonus. Gillingham, I believe, fouled out on that one. No, he didn't. Corn will go to the free throw line. Shoot one and one. 15 points for Brad tonight. Uh, his career high, 17, uh, if memory serves me correctly. He's so. got 16 now. You Gunning think you, for 17. Could you call it a career night, though, for Brad? Just a great game. Absolutely. Another one down, the Slukies lead it by 11, 70 to 59. They're gonna go to 12 and two on the season. More importantly, six and oh in the Valley, six and one on the road this year. Somerville a long three, no. Tipped away by BT and the Bradley Braves will keep it underneath, leading, trailing it by 11. 23 and a half seconds left to go in the basketball game. Marcello. 
Gets it into Gillingham. Long three, yes. I'm sure Jim Les would have liked to see that uh, a little bit more uh, during the game. Uh, Gillingham has not been very assertive on the offensive end throughout the entire uh, day. Just his second field goal of the game, and that's why Darren Brooks may be the best defensive player in the league. People say Gillingham's the best defensive player in the league, and Darren Brooks only has 12 points on the other side as well. It's a great matchup between those two guys with both of them having a good defensive prowess. Sure thing, and how great will this be come early March if these two teams can meet up, uh, you know, in the MVC tournament? Well, I don't think the Salukis want anything to do with Bradley. <laughs> Once Gilbert is, is healthy and on a neutral site, I believe Southern would like to get the number one seed, have Bradley in the mix somewhere in the, you know, five, six, seven area where they don't have I to agree. see him again. I agree wholeheartedly. It'd be a great game for basketball fans, uh, not a great match, though, for uh, Saluki fans to, to have to bear. 20.2 seconds left to go. 70 to 62 is the lead. The Salukis will be on the road again Wednesday night at Illinois State. We'll bring you the basketball game from Bloomington Normal. Tip off is 7 o'clock, or excuse me, airtime is 7 o'clock from Redburn Arena. And Illinois State has struggled, struggled, struggled in the Valley this year. Still winless. They do have a game, I believe, either tonight or tomorrow in the Valley. So that'll be another place where the dogs can get a win and can seize control this Valley race and have everybody looking up to them in the standings. Sure, and I don't think there's such thing as a give me win in the Missouri Valley, but Illinois State is close to, to one as you might get if you're SIU. They beat up on the Redbirds pretty bad earlier this year. Inbound to Turner and he's fouled by Gillingham. So we'll go the other way and shoot two free throws the rest of the way. BT so far in the basketball game has hit his only two free throws and if Southern makes its free throws they cannot lose this basketball game Yeah, pretty much out of reach right now for Bradley despite you know if, if they continue to foul if that's how you can just sink one of two the, the next couple of possessions they'll be just fine Brian Turner shot is good Brian's got six the dogs are at their season average 71 points Bradley is at 62, which is what the dogs hold teams to, 61-3 or 4 on the season. Brian hit them both. The dogs will not be denied after trailing by one and a half, 30 to 29. Robinson all the way to the hoop. Come on! Oh. What a block! Oh. Holy cow! Wow! You Alter gotta be kidding me. Alternate possession goes back to Bradley. What an incredible block by Lamar Owen. I don't, I don't think you could have done anything better than that <laughs> without special effects. 12 seconds left to go in the game. Wow. Robinson all the way to the hoop. Misses. Rebound, Lamar Owen. Bradley won't foul anymore. And Jimmy Les is going to say, enough is enough. And the dogs come away with a huge victory in Peoria. The final score is the Saluki 72 and Bradley 62. The Dogs go to 6 and 0 in the Missouri Valley Conference, 12 and 2 overall, and Matt Painter becomes the first Saluki coach in his first year to win on the road in the Civic Center here in Peoria. Joe Gottfried won earlier this year, or earlier this year, earlier in the uh, in the, in the Saluki ranks when they played at Robertson Fieldhouse. But the Dogs win it today. 72 to 62 and Brandon Moore has a pretty happy head coach Matt Painter. Brandon. Hey, thanks a lot, Mike. I'm over here with Coach Painter. First of all, congratulations on the victory, Coach. Uh, great grind it out win. It was it was a tough game out there. Can you just give your thoughts on the whole entire game? Yeah, I thought it was a definite gut check for us. We just had to get rebounds and scrap and get loose balls and do the little things to, to win on the road. And I thought it was a big win for us, especially um, here uh, at Bradley. It's so tough to win. We've only won here once in the past five years. So this is huge for us. Yeah. I noticed that in the second half, you guys came out and kept the defensive intensity up, forced a lot of turnovers for you. Did you give any special message to the guys on defense or? No, we just wanted to sustain that intensity and keep our pressure. And we thought we had about four or five turnovers in the first half with the ball kind of pinballed around and they ended up getting it, but we didn't get those opportunities. So we just kept with the pressure and kept battling and we have an experienced group and hopefully we can keep it going. Hey, I appreciate your time, coach. Great victory. Have a good one. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Back to you guys at the booth, Mike and Brandon. Great game for the Salukis. Thanks, Brandon. That was a happy head coach, I think, coming yeah. in here and, and 
getting a victory, and it was a grinded out ball game. Sure thing it was, and, and like you said, towards the end of the game, you know, the score doesn't indicate how close this game actually was, especially in the first half. Saluki's won it by 10. The final score from Bradley was 72 to 62. SIU wins it, and we want to remind you that Saluki basketball is brought to you in part by, here on WSIU-TV, Vogler Motor Company. By Mark Williams Outdoor Equipment. Banterra Bank. Venegoni Harrell Distributing LLC, Golden Eagle Distributing, and B&G Venegoni Distributing. 710 Bookstore and the Saluki Connection. SI Family Dentistry, Gentry Couch Incorporated, Brian's Heating and Air Conditioning, Daniel and Son Mechanical Contractors, and Garavaglia Heating and Cooling, and by the Southern and Central Illinois Laborers District Council have brought you this afternoon's basketball game, which was a great one for the Salukis, 72 to 62. They were led in scoring by Stetson, excuse me, Brad Korn with 17 points. Darren Brooks had 12, Stetson Hairston had 11, and Brian Turner had nine. So four Salukis in double figures. Look at the field goal percentage, 50% to 38. Southern heated up, second half from the three-point line, and no one's bigger than Stetson's three that put him up by six. Free throw percentage, you can't complain about 80%. Southern committed one more turnover for Bre than Bradley did, but it didn't deny them the victory. Yeah, and the dogs, the defense creates things for them in every facet of the game, uh, especially on the offensive end of the floor. When you hold a team to 38% field goal shooting, that bodes well for your squad. And then when you can go ahead and put together the type of offensive performance that Brad had, that Stetson had, you're going to be in good shape. So the Salukis, with four players in double figures, win the game 72-62. They're 12-2 overall, 6-0 in the Missouri Valley Conference, heading into our next broadcast Wednesday night at Bloomington Normal as the Dogs will take on the Redbirds from Illinois State, trying to make a sweep of this Central Illinois swing. Southern had four players in double figures, led by Brad Korn with 17, and they win the basketball game tonight. Repeating our final score once again, the Salukis 72, Bradley 62 for Brandon Moore, my buddy Brandon over here and all the crew, we thank you for joining us, and we'll see you Wednesday night.